Today I'm going to talk about dual stack Kubernetes with a direct server network. And uh, this is a little this is a little bit background about me. I'm Kanan. I'm I'm just working as a senior technical lead at Tata Communications Limited. I have almost 13 plus years of experience in tech industry. And yeah, just I have provided my Twitter plus uh, LinkedIn uh, uh, link. Yeah. So yeah, let us let us talk about uh, the actual uh, speak. Uh, the agenda is like uh, what is DSR and how DSR data routing will happen, and what is the business use case for DSR, and uh, how. Uh, dual stack Kubernetes with the DSR setup looks like. And uh, and then I'll show the demo. Then uh, yeah, then the question and answer. Yeah. Basically, what is DSR? DSR is nothing but direct server return. So which means whenever you are requesting any data to the server. I mean um, from a client. I mean, uh, from our mobile application or anything is our is our client, right? So then, when we whenever we are uh, trying to reach out to the server, first it will it will it will just reach out to the uh, first it will reach out to the load balancer for that particular uh, server. Then it will then it will reach to the server, the target server, where we need to fetch the data. Uh, for the security purpose. I mean, uh, basically, what what they did is like uh, 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 by default they are just applying the source NAT, which means our source IP would be completely netted. I mean, uh, it would be completely trans translated to the different IP address, and then it will send up, send it send out to the application. Then when the application replies back, the same flow. I mean, whatever the flow, the data comes from the application right from the client right with the same data flow it will go go back that is the traditional way but in case of dsr the moment data received on server so it will just reply back to the client directly so in between there might be a switch which will just route the data towards the destination towards the client which is requested. Basically, director server return is a method of load balancing that allows traffic returning from a load balanced server to be routed asymmetrically. Skipping the load balancer and traveling back to clients through the server's default gateway. In a traditional way of uh, routing, uh, first of all, uh, from uh, from the internet, just uh, I mean, as a client, we are just uh, requesting any data to the server, and then first it will reach reach out to the load balancer. Then load balancer will do the source netting. Okay, it will just uh, hide the source IP, and then it will just uh, send send it, send out to the particular server, and uh, once. We got the response back to the load balancer and then load balancer will de will detect. And then it will just route back to the corresponding. Client. Here the problem is like whatever the whatever the I mean from the intern from the client to server, whatever the data path it is sending with the same data path it has to reach back. But uh, this we cannot do it for all the application. Say for example, for uh, high, highly data streamed applications and all, we cannot uh, we cannot send the same. I mean, uh, I mean, we can send it via load balancer. We can request it via load balancer, but uh, the video data cannot be transformed via load balancer. So, which will which will heavily affect the load balancer. Right. So that's the only reason we are going to DSR. But yeah, I mean, uh, with respect to DSR, what will happen is like um, uh, from the internet. First of all, uh, the data, I mean, whatever the data we are requesting, so that request will reach to the load balancer, and then load balancer will send it to the corresponding web server, and then web server will directly reply back to the client through the switch. 
basically here we are avoiding the so many hops you can see like uh, from the client it has to reach load balancer and then from load balancer to the particular node correct and then from the node to the application but here in this case the application will directly uh, re re reply back to the client which were originated by which which originated the traffic yeah so I mean, basically, this is this is the DSR. Uh, so, what is the business use case uh, for uh, this 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 DSR? The number uh, number one. Suppose um, if you are the client and uh, you want to see how much uh, how much how much server you are utilizing it. I mean, if you if you want to see it, we can see it through this DSR method. And uh, you wanted to based on the source IP. I mean, uh, uh, then we can we can go with DSR method. Then as a server, you wanted to allow particular, uh, I mean, as a, in a server, you wanted to allow particular source IP. Then also we can we can we can go ahead with DSR method. Because uh, we, we, we never masqueraded the incoming uh, source IP. So since we have uh, complete privilege to you know see the source ip uh, we can uh, we can just secure our application based on the client source ip and then uh, the latest the the trending one like video games multimedia content delivery network uh, actually these these are all the things were uh, completely based on the data data server uh, direct server return okay uh, the reason is like i mean the moment you are requesting for a video i mean if you are, if you are requesting uh, youtube to play the video that request would be just only one uh, just to, just to some uh, one or two packets of ip packet right but the reply might be such a very huge data packet correct and uh, when whenever you are requesting your request will go via the load balancer because your request is like hey I, I want this particular video that's the only request you will be having it but the video content would be the, such, such a so huge data correct so that never come back with the same load balancer so i mean if if we if we allow the data to be transferred via load balancer i mean it would be like you know almost the load balancer will get overloaded correct so just to avoid such kind of conditions, we are going with direct server return. Okay. Uh, basically, the streaming streaming services need a huge amount of video data from the server to the mobile client application. But actually, the actually with, whenever you are requesting, that request would be you know very 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 less number of packet, but the, but the response would be huge number of packet. Correct. So yeah, I mean this is the only reason and. Uh, like the emails and all, e emails and all is, is one of the best use best business use case for uh, for direct direct server return. I mean, uh, basically the email if you are attaching such a very huge content, and uh, if if all the mails go via load balancer, the load balancer cannot even withstand it, right? So that's the whole idea for uh, direct server return. So here. In our case, yes, we have uh, brought up the dual stack Kubernetes with direct server return. Basically, this is our uh, whole architecture. First of all, for dual stack Kubernetes, what is required? The pod IP should be the pod should support both IPv4 as well as IPv6. I mean, both IP address it should support, right? And then, um, I mean, that is the main criteria. So now with the pod networking, we have supported both IPv4 as well as IPv6. So uh, in the in the in the CNI, uh, we, we would have we would have clearly mentioned what is the pod subnet IP, what is the pod IPv4 subnet IP and IPv6 sub, subnet IP. So based on that, your pod will be allocated with both IPv4 as well as IPv6 pod IPs. And now, uh, yes, we need to have a router, this physical router. 
basically this physical router should be having a ECMP and a PGP capability. And we will be having our Kubernetes cluster node, correct? And we and uh, we might be running a pod on both the nodes. Uh, I mean, uh, there might be a case like in a in a in a single deployment can have multiple replica and which may which which might run across all the nodes. So I mean, this is one of the use case like you know it is it is running on both the nodes. This is uh, we can consider like you know this is one of the deployment. Now, whenever the data is being requested, first it will first it will reach to internet, then it will reach to the then it will reach to the router. Now, router should should send it to the corresponding Kubernetes cluster node. Okay, prior to that, uh, there is something called service YAML, correct? I mean, you can see there is something called service YAML. So in the service YAML, there is a parameter called external IP. So the moment you have mentioned the IPv4 as well as IPv6 external IP, uh, then your Kubernetes cluster node should advertise those external IP to the physical router. OK, basically uh, the first step would be your Kubernetes cluster should have both IPv4 and IPv6 capability. I mean, your pod should have allocated with both IPv4 as well as IPv6 IP, number one. Number two, on your service YAML, there is a parameter called external IP. So where you will, you will use, you can mention the public IP, uh, public virtual IP. So uh, that public virtual IP will be advertised from the Kubernetes node to the actual physical router. OK, then your uh, Kubernetes node will be having IPVS ADM. IPVS ADM is a Linux utility uh, which is which is which is basically used to route the data uh, in an effective way. OK, uh, so the moment. Uh, OK, so now we have we have just allocated some of the IPv4 and IPv6 external IP to the pod and the moment uh, the uh, Traffic is originated from the client. First, it'll, it first it will reach out to the internet, then it will reach out to the router. Now, since our Kubernetes cluster, Kubernetes node have advertised those IPs. Now, router knows which is the which which is the node it should forward. Okay, so and then it should have the ECMP capability. Like, who is the shortest path to reach out the reach out the incoming packet to the Kubernetes cluster node. And then uh, you know the, the router will forward the data to the uh, the shortest path Kubernetes cluster node. OK. Then once the data is reached with that, uh, uh, once the data is reached on the Kubernetes cluster node, then how it will be routing to the pod and how it will reply back. I mean, that's what we are going we are going to see in depth actually in a further slide. Prior to that, how we achieved it. I mean, that's what I'm going to explain now. Uh, there is a open source uh, cube router uh, which supports IPv4 with DSR. Uh, yes, actually we have taken the cube router open source uh, IPv4 supported with DSR package. And then on top of it, we have we have just enabled the dual stack external external IP. OK, and uh, yes, the the first thing what we did is like for the pod IP, we, we were we should be able to allocate both IPv4 as well as IPv6 IP. And then in a external IP, in the external IP, we were we were we were supporting both IPv4 as well as IPv6 IP. OK, I mean uh, so that both in in I mean for a same application for both IPv4 and IPv6 can uh, you know it, it can send the send and receive the traffic at the same time. Now the moment you have mentioned this external IP. The cube router. Will start advertise the external 
uh, I mean, at, at, uh, we'll start advertise the IPv4 and IPv6 external IP to the ex, to the gateway. I mean, to the to the router basically. So this router should have the ECMP and the PGP capability. So here, the moment you have ordered the external IP, I mean, it'll it will just start. Uh, you know, uh, it, it will just start advertising the IPs. Actually, how we are achieving uh, achieving this? See, there is something called Mangle IP table. Okay. So, uh, whenever the service is being uh, whenever the serv service is being applied, first we will create a Mangle table. Okay. And in the Mangle table, there is a parameter called firewall firewall mark. Okay. Just we will set the firewall mark. And whenever that whenever the IP packet comes with a destination IP as a external IP, which are which is mentioned on this service, uh, this mangle I mean this mangle table just it will it will just mark the incoming packet with some hexadecimal value. This hexadecimal value is a unique number which is derived from both both external IP and the port number. So that I mean, uh, so that we we are all we will always get the unique firewall mark, okay. and then uh, once we have the once we have the firewall mark, we will uh, we will add the entry to the IPvS ADM table. Okay, basically, I mean in the demo I will show you each and every IPvS ADM table contains its pod IP. Okay, and uh, the moment uh, the moment the data comes with the external uh, i mean destination ip as a external ip uh, then through mangle table we are just marking the packet with a firewall mark then uh, it will be routed to the ipvs adm table once it is routed to the ipvs adm table in the ipvs adm table we will be having an entry for this particular firewall mark these are all the I mean, uh, uh, I mean, following some uh, following parts would be supported. I mean, such kind of entry would, entry would be there. I mean, I'm showing it in the demo. Like uh, there, I mean, for in a deployment, there might be a multiple replica, correct? So there might be a chance that like single single, uh, I mean, for the entire deployment, we'll be having one IPv4 and one IPv6 uh, external IP. So in that case, for IPv4 firewall mark, we will be having the corresponding IPv4 pod IP. And then IPv6 uh, firewall mark, we will be having the corresponding IPv6 pod IP. Now, uh, since we were creating the IPvS ADM table with the firewall mark mode, the incoming data never be masked. Rather, on top of the incoming packet, the IPv6 ADM will add another 20 bytes of data. Uh, the source IP would be the node IP, and then the destination IP would be the uh, pod IP, and then it will just uh, route the data. So that's how the packets which is belongs to the external IP when it reaches to the node, it is just uh, reaching out to the pod. So on the pod, we were creating the IP IP tunneling so that uh, the I mean once it once it reaches to the pod, the it it just removes the first first 20, 20 bytes of header, and then uh, the further I mean with the with the with the further uh, data, it can it, it is it will be able to detect like you know that that is belongs to that node, and then it will send it to the application. Once the application is processed, it will just reply back to the it it will it will just reply back. To the uh, reply back as a response directly to the client. Uh, that's how the direct server return with the DSR is working. So just I'll show you that. Yeah. There is a. I mean, uh, in my Kubernetes, in my simple Kubernetes cluster, just I am running only one, just one of the part, which is a simple web server. Okay. So. I have seen inside the pod uh, 
there is uh, there are two ips would be created two ips were created for this part one one for ipv4 and another one for ipv6 i mean just we have enabled the dual stack uh, functionality for the entire kubernetes cluster also with respect to the cni just we have assigned both ipv4 as well as ipv6 address so with this way you know uh, for a single pod we are allocating both ipv4 as well as ipv6 ip address uh, so you can see i mean every every deployment or every stateful set will have its corresponding service service correct so likewise uh, yes our our application also having a uh, service so here you can see there are there are two ip address were mentioned in fact these two ip address were the public ips okay uh, one one uh, one is for ipv4 another one is for ipv6 in fact here you can give n number of ipv4 and ipv6 address which means for a single deployment you can have n number of public ips in both ipv4 as well as ipv6 so now apply this in fact just now we have she we have seen it there is no tunnels were created only only the only the you know for a for a particular uh, pod we have both ipv4 as well as ipv6 ip in fact this uh, this is pingable in the uh, you can see that okay it, it is pingable within the kubernetes cluster see for both ipv4 and then ipv6 address you know it is responding back so now we are creating the service with the external ip uh, so let me just apply this see like the, the moment I have applied the external IP you can see within the pod that there are two tunnels see by default you know the pod had one uh, IP at one IPv4 address and then one IPv6 address so now the moment we created the service with the external IP it is creating there are two tunnels it is creating one with IPv6 another one with IPv4 Okay, and this is a IP IP tunnel. This 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 is IP six to IP six tunnel. Okay, and yes, actually this particular tunnel has been created within the pod. Okay, let us understand how, what is creating on the node. Uh, and see here. Okay, let me see here. There is a entry. For this, for, 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 for th there is an entry on the mangle table. Uh, so for this particular public IP, if any packets were received, just we are marking that packet with this ID. Uh, I mean, any any TCP packet is coming, just we are marking that TCP packet with this ID. Then we are routing this packet to IPVS ADM. Yes, actually we are we are we are we are setting the you know uh, MSS as well. In fact, this is this is just to avoid you know uh, in case uh, we have we have uh, set an MTU and uh, we should uh, I mean this is just to auto calculate the entire MTU and then it will it will just adjust start accordingly. Uh, I mean that is the functionality by de by default functionality of Cube Router, but yeah, we we have extended with IPv6 also. So if you have seen it, so here with this we are setting the in case if this destination IP comes, we are just to set we are just marking that particular uh, TCP packet with this ID, and uh, when you see this IPvS ADM command, uh, you can see like you know there are two firewall marks were created. Uh, 
I mean the highlighted highlighted things were two firewall marks. So each firewall mark, the corresponding IP table were created so that when the packet comes, we are just marking it. So and then it is routing to the IPvS ADM. So basically the IPvS ADM is a Linux utility which which just forward the packet to the uh, destined uh, dest uh, to the destination for our case that destination is a pod IP, correct? So when the external when the data with the external IP comes external uh, destination IP comes, we are just routing to the IPvS ADM table by marking that packet and then with the same firewall mark, we have the corresponding pod IP, correct? So uh, yeah, I mean we have uh, individual mark for the individual IPv4 and the port combination. So here I have one IPv4 and IP one IPv6 external IP, I mean public IP. So that's the reason that corresponding firewall mark has been calculated, and then its corresponding pod IP is being assigned. Okay, on the IPv6 ADM table. So now, uh, I mean due to this uh, IPv6 ADM table. The packet, the incoming packets were directly routed to the pod. So the pod might be situated, situated. I mean, it it might be placed on on the same node or on the different node. If it is on the different node, the packet would be routed. So before routing it, what is happening is like like you know, it is just encapsulating the. I mean, it is just encapsulating the IP packet with this pod IP. And then it is simply it is routing it. So when it reach, it reaches to the destined pod, basically this is a, this is a pod IP, right? So when it reaches to that destined pod, okay, uh, we have this we 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 have this tunnel, right? So we have the tunnel. Since we have the tunnel. Uh, and the pod IPs. So once it reaches here, it 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 just remove the first first IP header, so which belongs to the pod. Then when it see the IP address, so it is belongs to the external IP. It is belongs to the uh, public IP, and that same public IP is been assigned in our pod, and then uh, it will it will allow the application to consume the data. Okay, uh, application to allow uh, application to allow the consume the data with the with the preserved source IP. Actually, we just preserved the source IP by putting another IP uh, another another IP packet on top of it. Basically, we have preserved it, right? Uh, so, uh, I mean, we have just tunneled it. So when it when 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 it reaches here, just we removed the first uh, first twenty bytes, and then we have the further packets. So with this, we are, I mean, we are, we, we are, we are able to consume with our application. Then the application will directly reply back to the destination. Uh, I mean, the, 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 I mean, the source IP will be the, uh, the destination public IP. The destination will be the, the destination will be the, uh, the traffic which is originated by the. The traffic which which were originated by the user. So, uh, I mean, with this, the packets were directly reaching towards the source IP. Okay, I mean, in between there might be some uh, some default gateway to reach out the packet to that to the user. Okay, I mean, it never follow the same ideal ideal uh, way like you know first it 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 did not to follow the uh, follow to come through a firewall 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 rule and then uh, the actual physical router then from the physical router to the firewall rule then uh, then uh, load balancer then kubernetes node then when it reaches to the kubernetes node again we might have some uh, we, we we might keep some uh, ingress so through that it will reach out to the pod but in this but with this with this solution with this direct dual stack with the direct server return Solution in a single deployment, we can have n number of public IPs, which we can assign it on both IPv4 as well as IPv6, and then at the same time, uh, the application can serve both the traffic. So basically, uh, mostly the video streamings and all uh, 
generally working with this kind of uh, manner. Uh, say for example, OK, now if I just uh, curl it, see it is reachable. And if I curl with this uh, external IP, again it is reachable. Again it will be reach reachable. So in fact, this pod would be reachable from outside my network also. Because uh, I mean, uh, we, we were advertising this IP towards uh, towards the router, correct? So that's how the complete dual stack with the DSR is being is being established. Yeah. So thank you, thank you so much.